Hi, this is Todd, and I'm on the phone today with uh, Wayne Schneeberger, and Wayne's a, a loan officer with about 10 years' experience, and he called asking about how to integrate uh, our tool and our approach into his particular uh, lending process. So how are you doing today, Wayne? Oh, terrific, thanks. Cool. Well, what I thought we could do is maybe first uh, just share with us your particular um, process and sort of your mindset. What are you trying to do with your client when you sit down? Uh, to meet with them and kind of tell us how you do it today. Well, typically the the, the borrower that I get, uh, they don't have a process. They're kind of, um, you know, taking a very very much a spray and pray uh, type of approach. They don't have any steps um, or a plan. Uh, and if they do have a plan, it's you know probably four hundred one k at work. You know, in terms of asset plan and next to no liability plan. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what I take them through is I, I've uh, swiped and adopted um, um, a, a four-step process that uh, I, I, um, a gentleman by the name of uh, his name is escaping me now. <laughs> um, um, Anyway, it's a four-step process, you know, uh, separating assets from liabilities, um, where you get a cash cushion, um, a debt-free status. Kind of like the Kiyosaki, um, the rich dad, poor dad type stuff? or Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so and, Kiyosaki, and, yep. Yeah, so I, I introduced them to that plan, and, you know, they're having a, a couple of ahas there. And, uh, you know, at the end of um, that map... I'll tell them, you know, you know, anybody can follow this, but the the two steps that you, that you have to that you have to commit to is one, following it, and two, um, the implementation of the steps. You know, uh, getting the cash cushion is the first step, and getting getting to uh, um, a debt free status is the, the second step, and okay. you know, twelve months of of uh, reserve is is uh, the third step, and and then eliminating the mortgage is uh, probably going to be that fourth step. Okay. But you know, you, you, if uh, I always ask them this, you know, if I tell you that none of this is going to hurt you, will you will you will you make sure that that you follow through with it? And they, generally speaking, tell me yes. Um, and then at that point, I'll uh, uh, take whatever tool that I'm using and. Uh, I'll draw up the the plan, mm -hmm. you know, as I see it with alternatives. Um, so when you're going through this process with the client, uh, how much time are you spending with them, and uh, and is this all done in a single session, or is it done over multiple sessions? No, it's done in a single session. Okay. Um, I, I I spend about 20 minutes telling them, you know, what they should be doing, and then showing them how they should be doing it. Okay. Um, uh, and that part will take showing them how they should be doing it will take anywhere from thirty to forty five minutes depending on how much questions they have so you might spend an hour to an hour and a half with a client going through this whole process yeah, and I'll ask them for permission you know you know about ten minutes into it I'll say okay now we're go we're getting ready to go deep here uh do we have a little bit more time or do you want to you know uh, schedule this for another time or no, I give them that that option. Okay, and then and when you're thinking about and you're going through this process, are you pretty much kind of teaching and going through the material, or are you collecting information from them as you go? I'm I'm uh I've already done all the teaching okay. um, uh, prior to in that twenty minutes. Now I'm asking a lot of questions okay. about their present situation, and then where they're where they want to be, you know, I'm, I'm starting to ask them, uh, a lot more about, you know, uh, in the, in the, uh, perfect world, where do you want to be mm -hmm. in five years? Yeah. You know? Cool. All right. So then in that, at that, and so the reason we're having this call originally was you were curious about how would you incorporate or what would be some best practices on incorporating this particular process into your process? Is that right? Right. Great. Okay. Well, well, you know, I always like to completely adopt a belief system b before, you know, I either eliminate it 
or or start using it. And you know, I, I got introduced to this Bob Smart conversation. I said, okay, well, one, I just throw this this other process that I have to the wayside and just adopt this Bob Smart conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I ran into some problems with uh, getting the video to work online uh, through the, through the uh, software interface, the support interface. Um, uh, so I never really got to hear that that uh, borrow smart conversation from end to end. Okay. Well, all right. So we need to fix that. Um, so you're saying you actually had trouble watching it? Uh, you haven't been through the whole yeah. thing, right? Okay. It would start. It would start, and then after about like five or seven seconds, it would stop. Interesting. All right. I'll have to check that out. I did not realize it was uh, it was causing some issues. So uh, put that down. Borrow smart. Conversation. Okay, cool. So we'll get you a, a clean copy of that. And that particular conversation was, you know, specifically designed to do what you're talking about. It's that opening. Um, some people do it in 20 minutes. Some people spend 30. But it, it's really setting the tone to say, you know, you really need to think about the way that you borrow, and because the way that you borrow has probably a bigger impact on your wealth. And now, as we say, the way you borrow and the way you repay will ultimately have uh, a bigger impact on your wealth than the way that you save. Because most consumers are putting away uh, a small pittance of their gross income, 3 to 5 to 6%, uh, peaking out at maybe 7% of their gross income each month uh, towards savings. But 35 to 40% of their gross income is being used to service their uh, housing and related liabilities. So, you know, if you, if you can get a, a a, a 1% or a 2% higher return on the little bit that you're saving, that 3 to 6%, that's great. But it won't have the same impact of reducing that 30 or 40% that you're spending because that would give you the ability to save a great deal more. And the, right. the conversation itself, the Bar Smart conversation, and what I'll probably do is when I release this, I will uh, 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 make sure we have a, a clean uh, version of the video available that uh, you know we can attach with this for people that haven't seen that before. But the conversation is designed to set the table, so to speak, to say, this is really, really important. And we found that once that table was set, then people were very open to sharing their personal information, their financial information to go through and have you do your analysis. Whereas if you just went right into that up front, they might not be quite so uh, forthcoming you know, in sharing the information uh, that, that you would need to create a plan. So traditionally, when you went through and did your education and then you transitioned into a conversation with them, what were you doing? Were you collecting the information in real time? And as you collected it, were you putting it in um, and building yeah. a plan for them? Uh, usually when borrowers came to me, I, I got like a short application. I uh, was able to pull credit and, um, you know, I was able to uh, review that, collect some thoughts and then go into the call. Um with the education step, and then I would just uh, have all, all of the preliminaries input into the, the um, whatever presentation tool I was using. Sure. And um, then any little tweaks, uh, you know, any any little pieces of missing information I would add at that point uh, before I started structuring the alternatives. Great. So that that makes total sense. So what you're doing is is you're going to do that uh, collection of information prior to your session. Uh, when they come in, you've already done the first 80 or 90 percent in terms of getting that information into a format for a plan. And then you're going to uh, do your education bit and then go through and say, here's what I've got for you. Here, here's the work that I've already done for you. Is that correct? Right. And tell me, when you were collecting that information up front, traditionally, were you doing that over the phone? Were you sending them something to fill out and return to you? Were you sending them to a website to fill out that information online? What was your what's your favorite process? Website. Okay, so website's the favorite, and you find that most people are are, are pretty open to going to a site and, and putting that information in. Yeah, if they're if they're um, a little bit older, uh, they tend to want to just fill out a form and then and then uh, fax it over to me. Uh, but uh, generally speaking, uh, the lion's share of them have no problem with going to the website. Okay, great. 
So, all right, so we have all, all three of those methods we have available, meaning that um, you can send them the form, uh, you can actually you know, send them to a website and have them fill it out online, or obviously the third option was you could, you could take it right over the phone uh, for right. a client and do it that way. Um, are you familiar with all three of those options in the software in terms of how they work? No. Okay. All right. Well, let me show you the. Let's let's go through each. So, th the obvious one is taking it over the phone. And um, if you had a client that we have some people that they've got a client that's going to come in on Thursday for a session, and they know they're going to do because a lot of the people we work with use a very similar format to what you do. They have sort of an educational presentation that they do. Um, you know, if they've had and spent much time with us uh, in the past, they know that our preference is that they never touch the loan app if they can help it. They they spend their time doing education and analysis and providing advice and then you know the paperwork is outsourced to their team or uh, if they have that luxury but let's start off with the actual form if if I click the support button right here we have a lot of different resources in the software and one of the resources we have is our BSA interview form and there's this form right there and I'm just gonna click that form and it should open up right in the screen and, and you should be able to see it but this is basically uh, 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 a two-page form that goes through and covers every possible question that we would need to know. Their name, address, email, what type of property, uh, any liabilities they have. If it's a refinance, they would fill out this portion. If it's a new home purchase, they would fill out this portion. So they're only going to fill out one of these two uh, on the first page. So it's, it's actually very, it looks like a lot, but if it's a refi, you're talking about uh, seven fields here plus their name and their liabilities and that's it. Uh, on the back of the page they're all suitability based questions that we have uh, built into the software such as how many years do you think you'll be in the home? How soon would you like to have the home paid off? Uh, what do your other assets look like? What are your primary goals? What's your number? You know, What's your key objective? Is it to pay off your debts? Uh, if you could only accomplish one thing what would it be? This is one of my favorite questions from 20 years in the lending business. Um, I asked that it was the last question I asked every client in the inquiry process where I was collecting the data was simply if you could only accomplish one thing in our time together what would it be and I found that was the focusing thing that if I understood that and I delivered it and I told them that do you feel good that we accomplished that most important thing in addition to all the other stuff we did and they said yes that client was typically going to have a great experience. So this is a form that, that uh, you can uh, download as I just have by simply uh, clicking the support tab and then right here uh, click our newest BSA interview form and we update that whenever we change the software. So that would give you a paper version of the software that you uh, are of the interview process that you could use. And that's okay. assuming that you're not taking it over the phone. If you're taking it over the phone, I would typically recommend that you click the advanced plan tab and then click the ask button and this will mirror field for field that uh, that one page front and back form that uh, we just uh, that we just looked at so if I click on uh, this couple here you'll notice these are the exact same questions client information uh, current liabilities and I can add you know an un unlimited number of liabilities objectives what are your goals how long do you think you'll be in the house etc so all of this is coming in from uh, that form that I would either manually enter if they sent me the form or I'd enter it right over the phone as I was talking to them and this just becomes my interview process. I'm just going along and saying do you have a mobile phone I can put in? Um, you know, you're, you're meeting with a realtor on Friday. So I mean just things like that that I think are important. Now the third way which is really the preferred way of most of our users and I think you confirm that is to have the client complete this on your website and submit this information for you and you'll notice right here in my top left here it says Bill Danner refinance web application submission uh, that actually tells me right off the bat that this information came in from uh, someone that filled this out on the web so to build your website and what we've done is we actually have built for each user a dynamic website that's completely branded for that user all you have to do is click your promote button right here and this takes you oh to your, huh? your sentence 
<laughs> nope. Great. So you click the promote button, and uh -huh. right here on the promote page, we have invitations. You can invite and add an unlimited number of partners who can use this software for free. You can invite realtors, financial advisors, other lenders. Uh, we have someone right now who's very successfully calling on small banks and credit unions that have stopped lending, and he's inviting them to connect with him through the software. So this is, you know, different from what we're talking about, but I do want to point this out again because people keep forgetting that they can reach out and connect with uh, realtors and financial advisors who, once they install uh, the software, in the, or not really install, just, just log in, then they're going to be able to see that advisor and all of the referrals that are coming in from that advisor. But what you're really interested in is right here. It says create application websites. And when you click that button, it's going to pop up and it's going to show you a preview of a website that will be built for you. And all you have to do is, is put in a name here and it's going to have your name probably. So in your case, it probably has, you know, Wayne and your last name and it's going to be all there for you. And if you want to change it, you can. I could change this to Wayne's uh, main site. And what will happen is when I do that, you'll notice that this just changed right here because this is your link to your website so mine is just my name it's just it's just Todd Ballinger and you'll notice this just changed and what you can do is after you put your name in here click the preview button and it's gonna open your website with your logo all of your information an introductory video for your clients and if you click my contact it's gonna pull all of your information from your software your video I mean your picture your personal information and things like that and all the client does is a two-step process. Step one is they create an account and they put in their email and a password. And for people that are a little more nervous, this is an HTTPS encrypted site. So it's got all of the digital security certificates and stuff for you. It's all built in. All they have to do is put in their email and password and click create. So if I was doing this right now, let's just say it was WayneS at gmail.com and I put in a password so this is your client they just simply put in their own password and hit the create button you'll notice it takes them right into their uh, application page and it's the exact same form that we had in paper is right here it's one page it's very simple it takes about five minutes to fill out and they fill out this form put the information in put in as much as they can add their liabilities we have some people that will do this and fill it out They'll then call the client, pull a credit report, and then they might go through and update it or augment it however they want. But this is it. And when they fill out this one-page form, they can save it as they go, or they can just sit, click Save and Submit. And it will give them a message and let them know that their information has been sent securely to you. Now, when they do that, they're gonna you're going to immediately get an email. And that email is going to say, uh, Wayne, you've just received a plan from Joe and Patricia um, Smith uh, on the site and when you go log into your site you're gonna see their application right here with their information it'll say web application and all the information that they input will be here in the software so so it gives you three different ways that you can bring the information in you can send everybody to your website and you'll notice if I were to bring up uh, my uh, email signature let's see there's Wayne. Uh, let me bring up my email signature. Click New. And uh, I'll kind of bring it over. You'll notice what I've done is I have all of my key links here, and I have a link called Apply Now. It's right in my signature. So all I did is if I click on that Apply Now button and uh, click on Insert a Hyperlink in Outlook, depending on what you're using, you'll see that I've put my link in there barsmartanalysis.com forward slash secure forward slash Todd Ballinger so I've taken my link from my website and put it right here in my signature that way if I'm talking to someone I can say hey I tell you what just uh, see the apply now button click that button and go to my site set up an account put your stuff in I'll get back to you within 24 hours and we'll set up a time to get together So you got three different ways that you're able to actually get that information in there and you can tailor it to your particular, you know, uh, process for whatever is going to work for you. If somebody says, you know, I don't want to go online and fill it out, you just email them that PDF with the interview form right here that we just talked about. Email them that 
and let them send it right back to you. You know, just tell you, fax it back to me or mail it back to me or whatever. We have a lot of great strategies. We have people that go out to financial advisors and provide them this form. And they say, if you'll, if you'll fill this out with your client and send it to me, I'll create a comprehensive plan and return it to you within 24 hours. Then the advisor can sit down and put in, or their assistant can put in as much information as they have. And when they meet with their client, they'll just fill out any gaps and get it over to you. Then you can take and enter it right in here. But what we're seeing more and more people do is they're going and creating their site, their web application site over here at the Promote tab. And then what they're doing is they're sending that uh, link out to a financial advisor that they know and say, we've got a new program. If you will send your client here and they'll fill out the application, I'll create a comprehensive liability management plan for them at no cost. Now it's an easy thing because the advisor simply sends out this link to their clients with a value proposition that says, if you uh, 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 will go here, I have a lender that will go through and analyze your liabilities and review it with me, and we'll put together a plan for you. Now you've got the ability to literally have applications coming into your software throughout the day. Wow. So there are bunches of different I, ways to use it. I mean, when, when you look at those based on your process and your system, what do you think is probably going to work the best for you? Uh, that, that last option is definitely, definitely going to just plug right in. Cool. My question is this. Um, yeah. once, once you get all the information into the tool, uh, I'm a lone ranger um, luxury of an assistant. Sure. So um, uh, the information in here has to get into my LOS somehow. Yep. Um, what, what are the best practices that are out there for other people that you know, uh, work on their own and they're getting um, all the information into whatever system themselves. Yeah, we, we've looked at an integration with a couple of different providers, Calix and stuff like that, and when we actually did the mapping for it, what we found was that there are very few fields in the actual software that need to get mapped over. I mean, our goal here is to be the ultimate pre-GFE sales presentation tool, and our goal okay. is to help you increase your conversion rates by 70% or more. That's sort of our party line. You know, we want to help people increase conversion rates by helping them do a really compelling presentation. If I did this presentation for this couple here that's buying this new house, and I said, look, you should go with this particular program right here, you know, the 30-year uh, fixed, and we're going to be able to get your payment down to about, you know, less than $1,000 a month and stuff. If I went to go put that into Calix or Contour or or you know any of the different softwares what I'll typically end up doing is putting in their you know their first name last name email address and I'm going to put in their social security numbers which we don't even collect because our goal is to basically be a pre GFE tool we don't want to trigger reports and disclosures and stuff because you don't want to have to do all that if your clients not really a good candidate but assuming that right. they are then I mean you're literally going to take I mean if you think about it you're going to take uh, their personal information here, their address. You're going to pull in most of these are going to come in through your in-file pull probably, right, with your credit reporting uh, company for all their liabilities. And then you're going to put in the uh, loan program, the seven-year fixed arm at 4.442, and you're going to put in the loan amounts, and, and that's it. And there's, so there's actually, I mean, we don't mind doing the build, but every time we go through and do the analysis, we're like, there's so few fields that actually need to be brought over that we, we kind of feel like it's almost silly to go through all the work to build it out um, because, you know, unless you're cranking 10 or 20. Now, we have a couple of companies that have built an interface into their origination system internally so that that can happen because they just want it to be part of a single seamless process. But, you know, we're still looking at and exploring it. But I think if you actually go through and you've done this a few times, uh, there are not that many fields that actually get transferred over because you're only you're not going to put in three loan programs. You're only going to put in the one. You're only going to put their name in, and most of the what I consider to be the really hard stuff, um, you're not going to have. You're going to have to ask them all the compliance questions and things, and you're not going to have any of that in here. And you're not going to have you know real. You're not going to have account numbers and to the penny balances and things like that. So not meant to be a cop out, but we just we just can't uh, we can't really get. Uh, excited about the time to do it because we can't figure out if there's really that much of a productive lift for the uh, LO to actually um, put all that stuff in there.
Okay. No, I didn't realize that there there wasn't that much uh, 1003 information uh, in the tool. Yeah, and, and that's on purpose because you know one, you know most of the people that we talk to, especially the the larger institutions, they're nervous about you know triggering the GFE. So you know what this really is, it's a very light, very quick presentation tool that if you make the sale with this tool for them to want to move forward, then 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 the paperwork is a little bit easier. I mean, you're you're doing it, but still you kind of know the client's committed, they're wanting to go forward. A lot of people, you know, they do it differently. They're selling during the lending process and that that never ends. They're still selling, you know, throughout the entire 1003 and everything else. I'm a big fan of do your education, you know, get the sale made, get the client clear on what they're doing and why, and then from there it's just paperwork. Yeah. I agree with that. Okay. Well, I hope this has helped some. Yeah, it definitely has. Uh especially the part about the uh the website, man. <laughs> That is very cool. Well, great. Well, very, uh, you know, we appreciate you being a being a user, and uh, you know, let us know how you how we can make it better as as you're playing with it, and uh, hopefully, you'll get an email from us today on a new update that we just released that I think is going to be uh, pretty exciting for you. Okay, terrific. Okay, thanks, Wayne. Thanks a lot. Tom. Take care, man. Bye.